Okay, so the reason why the comparables model can be used in almost all circumstances is due to the vast number of multiples that can be used. Now, uh, this really brings us to understanding better uh, what different types of multiples are uh, and how we can use them in our valuation. So I want to just go over a few of those with you uh, and hopefully you can come to a better understanding of what exactly they mean. Okay, so one particular multiple is the price to book multiple. Okay, so the price to book value ratio represents the value of the company if it is torn up and sold today. This is useful to know because many companies uh, in mature industries falter in terms of growth, but they can still be a good value based on their assets. And so Ben Graham, the father of value investing, paid a lot of attention to uh, the price to book value. He tried to purchase companies that were at a steep discount to uh, their current book value, although that is very difficult to find uh, nowadays. But he would find companies like that and uh, find them at undervalued uh, relative to their assets and then allow the companies to appreciate based on what the value of their assets are. Okay, uh, so with purely financial firms, the book value can fluctuate with the market as these stocks tend to have a portfolio of assets that go up and down in value. Industrial companies tend to have a book value based more on physical assets, which depreciate year over year according to accounting rules. In either case, a low price to book ratio can protect you, but only if it's accurate. This means an investor has to look deeper into the actual assets making up the ratio. Okay, so again, the price to book value, we are looking at the book value okay of the company's assets we're looking at the current book value and if you are doing that if you're going price to book value uh, then the lower the price to book value is the cheaper the company is relative to its assets okay but the higher the price to book is uh, the more expensive it is relative to its assets and that's why in the comparables model you may use the price to book and compare it to another company of similar size of similar uh, industry of similar business because uh, you would look and say, okay, is this company cheaper or more expensive relative to its peers? And the price to book uh, can tell you that. Now, the price to book is one of the stricter ways of looking uh, at comparison because uh, just saying that you are cheap relative to your assets or relative to the company's equity uh, is not as useful uh, in most cases for most companies as it is to say, uh, is the company cheap or expensive relative to uh, their earnings or their sales or their earnings growth, okay? And so we take all those things into account in these next few multiples we're gonna talk about. The next one we talk about is the price to earnings multiple. And this is one of the most common multiples that you can use for stock valuation, okay? So price to earnings, we're literally saying the stock price divided by the per share value of the company's net income. So net income divided by the number of shares, that is the basic EPS, the basic earnings per share. Okay, so you get the price to earnings and you can compare two companies price to earnings uh, to determine how, um, you know, overvalued or undervalued one may be relative to the other. So in all these cases, we're looking at relative valuation. It's only relative to one another. Uh, just because a company has a price to earnings, let's say of 25, doesn't tell me anything about that company and its current valuation. You can only uh, compare it with other companies or itself over time in order to make any sense of exactly what we mean by this price to earnings multiple, okay? But again, in the same way as we looked at uh, the price to book, the lower the price to earnings means the cheaper relative to its earnings uh, that a particular company is selling in the market today, okay? Then price to sales. Price to sales is very commonly used for growth companies because a lot of growth companies either uh, do not have earnings, right, positive earnings, so they, their net income is negative currently, so you can't get a proper gauge of a price to earnings ratio, or uh, their earnings are very, very low right now relative to their price. And so their price to earnings is through the roof, crazy, crazy high, because let's say their earnings were like, you know, 12 cents a share. Well, that may blow up your price to earnings ratio. So what you may want to look at is price to sales. And price to sales can be very useful because you can say uh, how expensive or cheap is a company relative to their revenues. So if a company may have a high PE, but let's say they're relatively cheap compared to their revenues, uh, then we may be looking at a company that is a good growth stock that can be uh, invested in over the long term. But again, this is the price, the current market price divided by uh, the revenues for the company in a particular year. Uh, divided by the number of shares, so revenues per share, okay? So that would be the price to sales. Then there is the PEG 
ratio, which I talked a little bit about earlier this week, the PEG, right? That's price to earnings. So the same thing as the price to earnings ratio that we looked at already, but then it's price to earnings to growth, okay? So PE over the growth rate stated as a whole number, so 12%. Uh, would be stated as 12, okay, and you will get the peg ratio. Once again, the lower the peg, right, the cheaper the company is relative to their earnings and the growth of their earnings, okay? Uh, so what this does is this, again, can be a good, um, you know, technique to use when it comes to growth companies because, yes, taking a PE into account is important, but if you can take a PE into account along with the earnings growth, of a company uh, that can really help you to determine if a company is selling uh, at a at a premium or at a discount relative to others uh, that are like it okay but again all of these are being used as relative techniques you can only compare them either with other companies or with themselves over time so if a company is selling really cheap to earnings compared to what it has in the past you may ask yourself why or if a company you know used to be uh, valued higher relative to sales uh, than another company but now it's not you may ask yourself why uh, and be able to do some relative valuation in that place so that is where we're looking at this comparables model okay and uh, these different ratios are all used, but the PE ratio is the most commonly used because it focuses on the earnings of the company, which is one of the primary drivers of investment value. That's why when we uh, you know, are watching CNBC, keeping up with uh, financial news, it's called an earnings announcement. Even though they talk about all different financial metrics, it's called an earnings announcement because earnings is so important. So the E part of that PE is very big when it comes to driving a firm stock. Okay, so you can use the PE multiple for a comparison. You can typically use it if the company is publicly traded since you'll need both the stock price and the earnings of the company. Uh, the company should be generating positive earnings because a comparison using a negative PE multiple would be meaningless uh, and the earnings quality should be strong. So this means that the earnings should not be too volatile and the accounting practices used by management should not distort the reported earnings drastically. So again, we still rely on uh, some different uh, things going on within a firm uh, in order to value a company properly. Okay, so these are just some of the main criteria that you should use when choosing which ratio or multiples to use. So if the PE cannot be used, so choose a different ratio, uh, such as the price to sales or price to cash flow, which we didn't talk about, but works in very much the same way as the price to sales. Okay, 